Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we'll be making raw food for your dog and your wolf dog. Today I will be bringing you a thorough guide to the Bath Diet, otherwise known as the Biologically Approved Raw Foods or Bones and Raw Foods for Dogs. This is Kumi, my wolf dog, and I live with five dogs all together. Two wolf dogs and the rest are Nordic breeds and they have all different personalities and dietary needs. So today, this is a rough guide so you can take some aspects of what I'm gonna tell you today and use it with your own dog, which of course also has its own personality and dietary needs. But I swear by the Bath Diet because I have a Tamascan called Kiyoshi and she became very, very sick with inflammatory bowel disease after eating a commercial food diet. And I swear that the Bath raw food diet completely cured her of her ailment. So why feed raw? Well, you can't argue with mother nature. Dogs and wolves have eaten from nature for thousands and thousands of years. A natural diet doesn't contain all those horrible things that commercial food put into them like preservatives and carcinogens, which can cause obviously intolerances and allergies with dogs. Your dog will have cleaner teeth and fresh breath, better weight control, improved digestion, shinier, healthier skin and coat, reduction of allergy symptoms, harder, smaller, less smelly stools, increased mobility in older animals, more energy and stamina, strengthened immune system, improved liver, pancreatic and bowel health, and savings due to less trips to the vet. One common statement that I get told a lot is the following. Dogs are omnivores, not carnivores like wolves, so they shouldn't eat raw. Some people think that dogs are omnivores because they eat both meat and vegetation, which is true. Dogs are opportunists. They go around and they eat pretty much everything. But inside themselves, they are carnivores. Their internal system is that of a true carnivore. They belong to the carnivora order and therefore in their wild state, they are basically flesh eaters with powerful digestive juices. You only need to look at the anatomy and physiology of a dog to see that a dog is designed to eat meat. From the short intestines to the powerful jaw bones to the teeth designed for cutting and ripping flesh. Dogs are opportunistic carnivores with omnivorous abilities, yet their entire inside system is 100% designed for eating meat. This of course does not mean that dogs thrive on meat alone and in times of hunger, they of course have survived on human scraps and vegetation. But we need to understand that first and foremost, that they need to have a carnivorous diet. So what is the Bath Diet? Well, Bath stands for Biologically Approved Raw Foods or Bones and Raw Foods for Dogs. Basically, the diet should contain raw meats, organs, bones, vegetables, fruits, and a host of vitamin, mineral, and other supplements with nothing cooked at all. So today I'm gonna to take you through some examples of bar food so you can get used to feeding it to your dog. One of the things that worry people most when they're about to start the bath diet is that they think that the dogs aren't going to be eating balanced food. 
Well, if you look at a wolf in the wild, they only ever home in on a couple of prey animals in the area. So they're eating the same meat pretty much all year round. They're also eating bones and they're eating internal organs and they're eating the stomach contents, which is slightly partially digested. And when they're not eating those prey animals, they're foraging, so they might be eating some fruit and berries from bushes. And that's pretty much all the bath diet is. They don't go shopping for vitamins. So this preoccupation with the fact that animals need to have all these vitamins is a little bit over the top because an animal should be able to get all his vitamins from his food alone. When you look at wolves in the wild, they only ever live to about the ages of six to seven. This is due to many things such as starvation, fights between packs, road accidents, the list goes on. But they never ever die from their diet. And of course, a really wonderful example of why the natural diet does work is Maddie, the world's oldest wolf. Now she lived in captivity right up until she was almost 19 years old. And the only thing she ever ate was chicken carcasses. She used to have one or two every couple of days, entire, with all the bones, all the feathers, all the stomach contents. And she lived at this wonderful place with fresh mountain water. And that diet was good enough to keep her living and become the oldest wolf in the world. Okay, I'm going to take you through now two very easy ways of doing the bath diet. Now, the first way is the slightly harder of the two methods and it requires you having to source more of the basic ingredients. And the second method is a little bit easier because it requires you just having to go down the shop and basically buy it. So let's go over the first one, which what you need to do is you need to source yourself a base meat. Now what I've got here, which I have purchased from my local shop, is I have turkey mince. Now you can get this in all different flavors. So here we've got, we've got basic chicken mince as well and we have got tripe mince. Now you can get all different flavors. You can get duck, you can get venison, you can get lamb, you can get beef. But this is your basic carnivorous food. So what you're going to want to do is take your bowl and let's just use turkey for, none, for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open it up and I'm going to pop it in the plate. So you can just have a look, it's just basic mince and this is going to be what you're going to start with. Now when you look at the diet of the wolf you've got to think about a few other things such as the stomach contents of the animals that it's eating. So what I've got here is I've got a few things here that's going to mimic that and what we've got is we have a little bit of carrot. Now I'm not saying that the animals in the wild are actually going to be eating carrots, but dogs and wolves and wolf dogs are very good at eating this sort of thing. So I'm just going to put it in here now, but what we're going to do is we're going to blend this all up. Now the thing that is really, really important about blending this is of course, when an animal in the wild, a prey animal is eating fruit and veg, it's going to be partially digested. If you give food like this straight to your dog. Some dogs just don't like it. And you know, my ones have actually thrown up on raw carrots. So the best thing to do is to take something like a Nutribullet, what I've got here. And what you can do is you can pop some of the carrots in, not too much, because if you think about it, all we're trying to do is to get a little bit of fruit and veg to mimic the stomach contents. I've got a little bit of broccoli here. And um, of course, I've got a tiny bit of apple. Now they do quite well with apple. And what I'm going to need to do now is to put a little tiny bit of water in here and then I can mix it up. All right, so I put some water inside and um, I'm just going to blend this all up now into a mixture, which is a bit like the digested contents of a deer's stomach. Okay, so there we have it and I'm going to put this onto the meat. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Lovely, oh, we've got a whole carrot in there, hasn't blended completely. Okay, so I've popped that on there and now I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mash. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix the, uh, the vegetables in with the meat. Okay, 
it's not, probably not necessarily actually to um, mix it in, but I think it dilutes the flavour a little bit, mixes it all up and makes it far more tasty. Okay, so once that's done, you have got a mixture of the meat and the vegetables. And what I would do on top of that, which a lot of people do for the bath diet, is they tend to crack an egg. Now, dogs absolutely love this. It's a really good form of protein for them and they, they think it's really tasty. In the wild, you will get wolves foraging for birds' eggs as well. So this is a very natural thing for them. Whoops. <laughs> well, there you go, it still came out, didn't it? All right, so there we have it, we've got the egg. And um, if you really want to, you can throw a chicken on the bone on the top. And what that will do is that will give you some of the bone that they would get from the deer or the prey animal to crunch up. And um, it would help their teeth. So should we see what our dog makes of this, little Miss Kumi? Kumi, do you want to try this? Would you like to try this? Yeah, yeah? Okay, come on then. So what do you think of that then, Kumi? Mmm. With the bath diet, you don't really need to give any multivitamins, um, but some people do, do still like to do it. So here's a really good example of some vitamins that you can give your dog. You can just give those one or two a day, depending on their size, if you'd like to just be safe, that you are making sure that you are supplementing their diet. Okay, so still going over the basic bath diet, um, I'll just show you one more very quick example. So if we take the chicken mince, okay? So if we take it out of the packet exactly like I did the previous one, and Kumi's very happy today. She says, this is a very good blog today, mummy. I'm very happy with what you're doing. Yes, look at that, isn't that good? Okay, so what we've got is chicken mince. Now, if you want to make it slightly easier than having to blend up the vegetables like I've done a minute ago, what you can do is another option is you can buy fruit and vegetables already frozen. Now, what I've got here is I've got Nature's Menu, but there are, there are lots of different other manufacturers that you can get. If you go down your local pet shop, you can find them. And what you wanna do is you've got the mince, find the, f the fruit and veg, and then all you need to do is basically just pop some of that in the bowl with the mince, pretty much like that. And there you go, you've got it. You've got the vegetables, you've got the mince, and then you can take the egg and you can crack the egg on top. La voila. And if you'd like, you can pop a bone on top. Dinner. Well, I've shown you how you can put the egg in with the bath diet, but one thing I do want to talk to you about is eggshells. Now, of course, with the bath diet, you can use the shell as well. It's an amazing form of calcium for dogs, but instead of just giving it to them like this, it can get a little bit stuck in their throats. Why not pop it in a pestle and mortar and give it a good old crunch up, like I'm doing. You wanna make sure it's nice and powdery before you put it in. All right, I've completely crunched up the eggshell. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the food. Now, some people just leave it on top of the food, but I like to give it a little bit of a mix. So all I'm gonna do is just gently mix it in with the food like so. And this is very, very natural for the dogs because of course in the wild, the wolves will be eating the shell of the egg as well as the insides. There you go. Okay, so I've showed you this slightly more complicated version. And if you're looking at even that and thinking, oh my God, I just haven't got time to do that. Well, don't worry, because I'm going to show you a really, really easy version now. And all that requires is simply you going down your local store and 
buying it. Now, I've just got some general examples here. We've got a very good one here. It's called Country Hunter by Nature's Menu. And what it is, it's wild venison. And it's already mixed up with fruit and veg. And you can get it and it's frozen. And you put it in your fridge and you defrost it and put it straight into the bowl. So I'll show you what it looks like, just so you have a general idea of what you'll be feeding your dogs. And this is really good, obviously, if you're going off to a job in the morning, you just haven't got time to do the bath diet. So all you're going to do is when you're feeding your dog in the morning, tip it out <laughs> into the bowl. Oh my goodness me. There we go. And that's it. That is pretty much your bath diet and it's all done for you. Now, if you have got time to just do a few extra things, I would still crack an egg on top. So, oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> it's just got goes to show I never crack eggs, do I? So I don't know what to do with eggs. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to get that in there now. What do you think of that, Kuvi? She doesn't care, it's still food. Okay, mmm. All right, so you've got your egg, and if you've got time, like before, chicken bone on the top. Make sure it's raw, do not cook any of this. If you cook your chicken bone, it's going to splinter and it's gonna get stuck inside your dog's stomach or bowels, and you will end up having to go to the vet and have an operation. It could be fatal. You've got to be ever so careful. When they are not cooked, they are still chewy. So there you go. That's the lazy man's bath diet. You don't have to put chicken on top of your food. There are other options. We've got this one. We've got raw chews beef chunks and those are from nature's menu they are supposed to be frozen they've gone completely soggy but if you could you can throw some of those on the bone on top of your food as well now one thing that i'm really really passionate about is always making sure that you feed your dog healthy and that is all of the time and that includes when you're giving them treats going back when i was talking to you about tamascan kiyoshi who got very very ill i swear to god that she got sick from a really nasty chew that came from one of the very very well-known brands that we know now she ate this chew it was supposed to clean the teeth it was filled with sugars and um, all of my dogs got the most horrific diarrhea and hers was so serious that she almost died over the period of two years so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a healthy alternate to um, basically giving them something sugary and nasty from the local store. It's very, very simple. It's something like this, lamb tripe. Now, all it is, is, is raw meat, but dried. This is exactly the same as if you're feeding bath diet. And if you want to give them a treat, just give them a dried piece of meat instead. Now, the dogs absolutely go crazy. My ones at home, they go nuts for this sort of thing. And um, just give them one of those once a day and they'll love you forever. And um, there's another example here. We've got pure salmon. And of course, fish is very good. It's a good source of omega-3 for the dogs. And you can give them this. It's 100% fish. There's nothing else in it. There's no preservatives. There's no carcinogens. And you know that your dog is getting something good. Don't give them crisps. Don't give them chocolate. And don't give them those nasty treats that you can buy from the commercial brands that you get down the shops. Just give them pure and simple raw or dried meat. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on bar food. And remember, I am not a medical practitioner. So before you decide to embark on this, please make sure that you've checked out your dog with your vet to make sure that they don't have any medical conditions or anything else that might conflict with a bath diet. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, then please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel where Animal Watch will be bringing you fantastic episodes every week on dogs, wolves, animal conservation and rescue. Shall I give her the treat? Yeah, go on then. There you go. She's full up. <laughs> okay. <laughs>